Hello again, I am Blunty, and if you are a subscriber or a long time viewer, you may remember this thing. I reviewed it about nine months ago. It is the Avermedia Live Gamer Portable, and I found it to be extremely good and extremely handy. And as a matter of fact, almost all of video game capturing I've done ever since I received this and unboxed it and reviewed it has been done with this. It is a really, really solid easy, simple, reliable device, and I like it very much. But that was nine months ago, and we all know what could happen in nine months. It's had a baby. This is the Live Gamer Portable Lite, or LGP Lite, and I am going to unbox this here for you right now. As you can see, it's still sealed and everything, so I'm all excited. So we'll just tear into that, and we'll get rid of the shrink wrap, and see what we're dealing with here now. This, as I said, is the uh, the light version. So what's the difference between this and this? Well, it's not really much. All they've done is taken away that switch there and that slot there. And that switch and that slot are to do with the PC-free recording, which means this one is the cheaper option to go for if you want to just use your PC to capture on. You don't have the, uh, the SD card option to do PC free capture so you just plug this one into your PC and away you go and that makes it less expensive and if you uh, are not going to use that option then this is the bargain of a lifetime because other than that it's exactly the same it has the HDMI in and out points it has the audio in and out so you can do your live commentary and all that kind of gear and it's not red anymore, it's black around the edges, so if you bolt both of them, you can tell them apart at a glance, I guess. <laughs> but what else you get? Cable. That's all you really need, isn't it? One USB cable. It is a standard uh, mini USB to a uh, standard USB thingy. And that's it. Just the frame and the instructions, uh, which we will not go through because it unfolds like a giant map and it's really easy to figure out anyway. You plug this thing into that, and the other end into your computer and your game machine into that and your TV into that so you get the lag free uh, display to your TV um, and away you go so there is only one thing to do now and that is to plug this in and see how it performs oh actually before we get on to further testing this I want to mention something for those of you who bought one of these and like me have a Mac as your main machine the software uh, has they've just come out with a beta testing uh, a beta version of the software that will work on Mac now the new Mac software is really nice too very clean very elegant and it's very easy to see what's going on you can see at a glance if you're in recording mode and even how much record time you have left on your current disk and little pie chart graph thingy there you don't even have to look at any numbers you can just look over yep plenty of black space there game on it's just in beta at the moment they're testing it make sure it works and putting it out there to pe for people to play with and see how badly you can break it but for right now the mac version seems to be working flawlessly with this i've tested it a little bit and it's working terrifically so back to the lgp light i'm going to go away and i'm going to plug it into my consoles and i'm going to record a few gameplay sessions long ones short ones and little bits and clips and stuff put it through its paces and i'm uh well i'm going to show you some of that footage while i talk about how it performed i guess so as per usual, I made sure to spend more than a week testing this thing to make sure there were no sneaky surprises or weird little bugs and crap. And I'm happy to report that the light version seems every bit as rock solid and stable as the original LGP device that uh, I gushed on about in my original review. Unfortunately, because Sony have yet to deliver on their promise of an update to deliver unprotected HDMI game output, I was unable to test it with my PS4 yet. Hint, hint, Sony. But both my Xbox One and Xbox 360 tests were all flawless. In every instance, in every game, what I got was a very clean, smooth MP4 file with zero glitches, zero compression artifacts, frame skips, or audio sync problems. Just perfect, ready-to-use files. I love it when crap is this easy. 
The software, of course, lets you fiddle with your preferred capture format and frame rate and bit rate so you can choose to max it out for the best quality possible or sacrifice the bit rate a bit to get a smaller file size. In my testing, I found a 1080p 30fps capture at 14 megabits a second gave the best quality bang for buck without generating stupidly huge files. But if you're ready to deal with the big files and you want to make sure you get the absolute best quality possible, you can absolutely max it out at 30 megabits per second. You can even ask it to keep a loop record going, keeping a rolling recording buffer of your gameplay. Anything from saving the last five minutes all the way to the last hour of gameplay. So when you do something really friggin' cool or whatever, you can just save it to file instantly at a slap of a button without having to record all of your multi-hour long gameplay session and then try and make a note of when the cool thing happened and then go back to the file which is four hours long later and try and find the bit where the cool crap happened later. Oh, it makes it so easy. And yes, because I always get asked this when I review capture devices, you can absolutely record your own live commentary as you go. The software even gives you the option of saving your commentary as a separate MP3 file, so you can mix it into your editing later, and so all your gameplay audio is absolutely clean if and when you ever need it to be. It's a very flexible option. And as you can see, at least if you're watching in the 1080p YouTube option and full screen probably, it's a very crisp record. Certainly much cleaner and higher resolution than the built-in game DVR stuff the new consoles both have. And it's all this extra quality and really all this extra flexibility that is the reason to buy an external capture device, even though the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 have their little built-in versions of it that do, you know, 720p and have time limits and stuff. Yeah. Oh, uh, before I go, I did actually notice one more difference that uh, I forgot to mention in the start. USB connection there. That's your PC-free game switcher recording thing there. It's obviously not on this one because it doesn't need it because it doesn't have that, which is an SD card slot, which is missing from there. There is one other difference, and that is that port there. That is the AV in. That's for the uh, composite cable input. So that may or may not be a big deal to those of you who've already moved on to the next generation of gaming. It's all HDMI anyway, but something to be aware of. That is uh, missing from the light version as well. But other than that, it has the same onboard MPEG-4 processing and everything like that. So it, you know, it doesn't put any strain on your computer. Even if you've got a relatively sort of mid-range computer, you can still capture full HD 30p. Easy, done, no worries at all. All. And it is, and again, it is just a fantastic little device. If you don't happen to need the uh, old school analog input or the PC free recording mode, um, but yeah, LGP Lite comes with my seal of approval as far as I'm concerned, or as far as you're concerned, or as far as everybody's concerned. It is a nice little bit of kit. So thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.